Hi, this is Adam Furtado for PhotoNerdsUnite.com and today I want to bring you part two of the auto mask feature inside of Lightroom. Now in yesterday's episode, I showed you the auto mask feature and how that could be applied using the graduated filter and that worked out pretty awesome. The problem with that is in yesterday's episode, the application was very simple. We basically had a cutout of a building and that cutout was pretty easy to navigate. But in today's episode, I want to show you what do we do in the case when the photograph is a bit more complex. For example, in this photo photograph here, we have this beautiful white birch tree surrounded by all this intricate green foliage uh, around all of the trees. And really what I want to do is isolate the white and the birch and just make it pop a little bit more. But if I were to go in with a graduated filter or a radial filter or maybe even an adjustment brush and try and brush in all of the white bark areas, that could be a pretty daunting task and it's probably not going to look as clean as as it could. So in today's episode, I want to show you a really awesome way to isolate that white birch using the auto mask feature in a pretty simple manner. So let's jump in and show you exactly what it is I'm talking about. In order to accomplish the effect that we're going for, the tool that we're going to use for this example is the adjustment brush. So we're going to head on up to the adjustment brush and load it and we are going to make sure that we have a new adjustment being selected. Now before we get started, Started, the first thing we're going to do is increase the size of the brush all the way up to 100%, as large as it'll go. We're going to decrease the feathering down to zero. We're going to pull the flow all the way up to 100%, and we're going to pull the density all the way up to 100%. And the last and final thing we're going to do as it relates to the brush is we're going to turn on the auto mask feature. Now, if you notice here, you can see the outline of the brush, and it doesn't quite cover the entire photograph. And in order for this to really take effect, I want the brush to cover the entire photograph or at least the entire parts of the photograph that I'm trying to adjust. And in this case, that's the birch tree. And if I hover on the main birch tree that's in the center of this photograph, you'll notice that the brush to the left doesn't cover the birch tree fully on the left, as well as it doesn't cover the entire birch tree on the right as well. So what I need to do is make this picture a little bit smaller. And in order to do that, we're going to go up to our navigation here on the left hand panel and we're going to open this drop down arrow and look for a ratio that's small enough but not too small. For example, you know, 1 16th. Sure, the brush covers the whole photograph, but the picture is about the size of a baseball card. I'd like it to be maybe a little bit larger, so I'm going to try the 1 8th ratio and that's looking pretty good. Just for shits and giggles, I'll do the 1 4th and again, that's too big. So so it looks like for this example, the 1 8th ratio is going to be the best. And now you can see in this example how the brush covers the entire photograph. So what I'm trying to isolate will be covered in its entirety. Now that I have the brush set up and it fills the whole entire photograph, the next thing for me to do is to make the selection. Now the auto mask is going to do most of the work. What we're doing is deciding what part of the photograph do we want to isolate. Again, in this example, what I want is the white birch in this photograph to be able to, you know, pop and punch. And so in order for this to work, I'm going to hit the letter O for my overlay to show. And when I bring my brush cursor around, what I'm doing is looking for the bright parts of the birch. And so in this case, the whitest part of the birch that I can find. And once I find it, I'm just going to click one time. And just like that, you'll see how all of the red areas is what's being isolated here. Now just to take this a step further so that you can visually see what this is doing, if I were to click on the little pin that's been placed here and move this pin around, you can see how the red overlay actually changes. So in this example, what it's doing is it's measuring all of the green. So if I wanted the green to be affected, you could see how intricate this mask is working. If I wanted 
maybe the yellows to be more selected, I could move this pin over to the yellow areas and you'll see how those yellows are being affected. This is a very, very powerful tool. If I ever wanted this type of detail in a mask, typically I would have to go to Photoshop and use some sort of luminosity mask or advanced masking selection techniques or something in order to get this kind of detail. But it's actually built into Lightroom. You just have to know how to use it. So I'm going to move this pin back over to the white birch. That looks pretty outstanding. And you can see how it's leaving alone all of the green and it's just isolating itself to those white effects. From this point, I can head on over to the adjustments that are built into the adjustment brush. I'm going to hit the letter O so that that red overlay goes away. And from here, I'm going to start to punch up those tones in that white birch. So I'm going to pull up my whites maybe a little bit, pull my highlights up some, maybe add a little bit of contrast, maybe even some clarity. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. I could even maybe pull the blacks down a little bit and look at how nicely that birch starts to come alive without affecting everything else. If I hit the toggle switch so you could see before and after, you can see how nice of a job that's done. Now, this was just for the white birch area. If I wanted to continue this technique and do the same for the green areas, all I have to do is repeat the process again, but this time with a new adjustment. So I'm gonna head on up choose new and go over to the green areas and click on the greens. And when I do, you'll see that overlay is looking pretty good. Now, the reason that this works is because what it's doing is looking for contiguous colors, continuous, basically meaning everything that's of similar color and similar value. And so it's looking for all of the tonality or greens, which I've selected. It'd be the same if I move this pen over to the yellows. It's looking for all of the yellows that have a similar green tone but I want the greens not the yellows so I'm gonna move this and you'll notice that it's selecting all of the green leaves but it's really leaving it's leaving the green alone on this tree so if I wanted that to be included as well I would just go over to that area and click on it and you'll see how it will also include that section so it's added to the selection that I had made I'm gonna hit O so my red overlay goes away and from here I can decide what I want want to do with those greens. So maybe I want to pull the shadows up on those greens a little bit, maybe decrease the exposure just a little, and maybe add a little bit of more uh, temperature to this, as well as maybe add a little bit more saturation to those greens. Or I could desaturate those greens so that the colors are a little bit more uh, muted. Um, I actually kind of like the way that looks. Maybe pull the sharpness up just a hair as well as the clarity up. And so again, if we look at the before and after, so there's the before of the whites, there's the before of the greens, and there you have it. So the auto mask feature is a fantastic tool for not only simple, less complex photographs, but also for very intricate, detailed parts of the picture as well. This isn't gonna work all of the time, but when it does work, it works fantastic. Go ahead and give it a try. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel where we'll be putting out lots more videos coming to you soon. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next episode.